If you have any interest in Canon cameras or the Canon industry in general, you probably know about Canon's controversial decision to ban or block third-party lenses on the Canon RF mount. This was clearly the intent when they developed the mount. They developed a patent system or a patent of the autofocus system that they could use to block third-party lens manufacturers from making lenses for their mount without Canon's permission. And this decision has caused myself and a number of other shooters to move brands for their primary shooting experience. I mainly shoot Sony now with a little bit of Fuji on the side, but I still do have some Canon cameras but I don't have a lot of great lenses for it simply because Canon doesn't make RF mount lenses that I actually want to use. They're either prohibitively expensive, mainly zoom lenses, and they don't make any really native, fast RF wide angle lenses, which is my favorite way to shoot. But one thing that almost nobody knows, and anytime I ever talk about this, people say, hey, isn't that banned on the Canon RF mount? Is the fact that third party manufacturers have been and continue to make cinema lenses for the Canon RF mount. And you can buy and use cinema lenses on your Canon RF camera. And this is simply because Canon's patent, which has allowed them to block third-party lens manufacturers from making lenses for this mount, is limited to the autofocus system. It doesn't actually stop a third-party lens manufacturer from making a lens that mounts on a Canon RF camera. And because cinema lenses are manual focus by default, it means that you can buy a whole range of cinema lenses from a number of manufacturers and mount them natively on your RF camera and it works tremendously well. And one of my favorite brands for discount lenses, particularly cinema lenses, is Seven Artisans. And I've got in front of me three Seven Artisans RF mount cinema lenses that I've been using and I absolutely love. And the reason I'm making this video is because this is a series of lenses that, that Seven Artisans is continuing to fill out and they have just released a new lens for this series of lenses. It's a 14 millimeter T2.9 lens. And this is quite a sophisticated lens in its optical design. It's actually a 13 element lens in nine groups. So it doesn't mean by going with a third party lens manufacturer or a budget cinema lens option that you're getting a less sophisticated design or worse image quality. The image quality on all these lenses is absolutely excellent. Now I should disclose that Seven Artisans has sent me these lenses for free over a period of the past probably 18 months and they've just sent me the new 14 millimeter T 2.9 which kind of helps fill out the set. The only lens that I don't have is the 35 millimeter T 2.0 which is a bit unfortunate because I think that is probably the most well-rounded lens. And if I was gonna recommend that you buy one of these lenses only, that might be the one. This new T2.9 14 millimeter lens is more of an establishing shot companion lens that would, you would use once you had maybe one or two of these other lenses already. And Seven Artisans does make a few different series of lenses. They make full frame lenses and crop sensor cinema lenses. This is the full frame set. And I will put some links in the description down below to the best pricing or any discounts I know about, as well as a, a direct link to the correct set that we're talking about here, because this is the full frame set. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is, I think when we think about budget lenses, the one thing we often think is sort of poor quality or poor build quality. That's certainly not what you're getting with these lenses. The build quality is significantly better than, I would say, just about any of the new Canon native mount lenses that Canon sells. These are all metal lenses. They are metal geared focus and aperture rings. They're on a metal mount. They weigh an absolute ton. They also all have the exact same filter thread. So if you're swapping filters or you're swapping a matte box, you're going to be able to use the exact same setup. The other thing I'll point out is the gears on all of them line up. So if you are using a follow focus system, you won't have to change anything. You just put them all in a, you can see they're all lining up there. You just swap one on, the other one comes off and your follow focus system will just stay where it's at, which is uh, pretty much a desired design of all cinema lenses. Looking at the optical performance, I'll throw some samples up on screen now. As I said, the 14 millimeter is more of an establishing shot lens or one for when you're in very, very tight spaces. I found the image quality to be excellent. It starts at T2.9 rather than T2.0 that the other lenses start at. So that's a little bit less demanding on the optics. It's a little bit easier to get a sharper image with T2.9. 
but it's also very sophisticated optical design being 13 elements in nine groups. That is quite significant, particularly for a third-party lens manufacturer. It's a design, uh, the type of design that you would generally see from a high-end first-party uh, cinema lens or photography lens. Uh, the other two, and I'll throw some images up on screen now that I captured with them, both the 50 and the 85, which I've had some experience with. And I will say that these lenses perform for me equally well on crop sensor and full frame sensor. So even though they are full frame lenses, and I'm talking about them like full frame lenses, some of the image samples you're going to see have been shot on crop sensor cameras. And I think these lenses are great because at T2.0, you can still get a blurry background. You still can get that subject separation. That's still good low light performance on a crop sensor camera. But you've got a lens that if you upgrade to a full frame camera at some point in the future, and looking at something like the Canon R8, which is a very affordable full frame camera, which also has a Canon Log 3 in it, I think, rather than Canon Log 2. It's got C-Log 3. This would be a perfect setup for that. So now you've got these lenses that can kind of do double duty. You can use them on your crop sensor camera, even something like the R50, one of the really cheap cameras. But then if you go up to an R8, they work e equally well or potentially even better on a full frame camera. One thing you often get when we talk about budget lenses, particularly these budget cinema lenses, is you often get um, a lot of distortion or you know heavy vignette or you get a, a lack of sharpness wide open. I would say that these lenses are reasonably clinical. I wouldn't say that they're on par with one of the, you know, $5,000 per lenses out there, but they're definitely not a lens that I would characterize as a character lens, which just means that they have a whole bunch of optical flaws that still kind of look cool, even though I do like character lenses. These are reasonably clinical for the price point. And if I look at the price point and where these are situated at, I think they are the sharpest and highest quality images and the most neutral images that you're gonna get out of a cinema lens at this price point. Now, even though it's not one of the most versatile focal lengths, the 85 millimeter lens in this set is one of my favorites. The images coming out of it are just absolutely amazing. And I think the 85 millimeter focal length is just something that's really, really special. And anybody who doesn't have an 85 millimeter lens should really, really consider having one. And I've just thrown a video on screen now. This is my review of that 85 millimeter lens. I actually do it on the Canon R7, a crop sensor camera, and you will see how good the images are out of this lens, even when used on a crop sensor camera, and it'd probably be even better used on a full frame camera.